Friday morning. I'm Jay Fidel, and it's Friday, and you know what that means, Trump Week. Uh, and we have a wonderful list of, uh, of um, points to cover this morning. Before we do, though, there's one point of interest uh, that we want to bring to your attention. Uh, Cynthia and I have both uh, looked at this, and we've found it excruciatingly funny. <laughs> now, now, it seems that uh, parodies are sweeping the nation. Um, and uh, one of the big parodies uh, is Randy Rainbow. Randy Rainbow has dozens of parody videos on YouTube, and uh, they're, they're hysterical. Yes. And we want to show you one of them just as an example of the quality, the production quality, and the humor, um, and, you know, and the care and concern that has gone into these parodies, which makes them so funny. There are others, but let's look at this one from Randy Rainbow, which is so part of it. Of anything that's factual, he orders a retraction. When greeting foreign leaders, he prefers the pomp and circumstance than vomits verbal diarrhea to satisfy his sick offense. There never was a military draft he couldn't dodge, and he is excellent at advocating racist and misogyny. He likes to make up stories with convenient exclusion of topics that he finds make him feel threatened like collusion. He expertly persuades his base that Mueller's hunting for a witch. Instead of their own president, who's obviously Putin's bitch, he calls reporters fake and says the Democrats are sour grapes, then lies awake at night and thinks about those Russian pee pee tapes. Oh, never has there been a stable genius as smart as he And if you don't believe me, you can just ask Sarah Huckabee And though his brain is smaller than his tiny little penis He is the very model of a very stable genius Oh, his brain is smaller than his tiny little penis He is the very model of a very stable genius Whatever, girl <laughs> what a way to begin a Friday. Now, that's just one example of dozens that Randy Rainbow has. I don't know what's real name. Uh, that Randy Rainbow has on YouTube. There are others, too. There's a guy named Don Caron, who has a, who has a quartet that has his very, these very funny parody songs. Um, but, you know, the news item here is that Randy and others are making parodies that are very high quality, and they are very popular. They're getting millions of views on YouTube, and they make fun of you-know-who. So it's perfectly in line with our Trump week to report this to you right. and tell you there's something sweeping the country on YouTube as, as parodies. What do you think, Cynthia? I think it's genius. And I think it's that genius. It, it's genius. I really do believe it's genius, yes. <laughs> Rhymes with never mind. <laughs> I, I love the way it's the parody on real things. So it's, it's funny, yes. But it shows kind of the ridiculousness of this president, which is what I love about it. I think that's just, like I said, I think it's genius. Well, it's, it's sweeping the country, I think, the, by, yes. just by the number of views and the quality of these things is, is just fabulous. And I mean, it's, you know, the power of derision, <laughs> the power of parody, uh, this has got to take a toll. It's got to maybe reach the base. And right. make it clear, you know, the absurdity of what of what has been happening. And what's going on. And uh, right. they cover all kinds of events, you know. Right. The other thing I want to report to you, Cynthia, is that there's a, there's a, you know, Wikipedia. A lot of people put Wikipedia down, you know, sort of an all-purpose online encyclopedia. But there, you know, there is uh, one, I call it an article. Uh, it's more than an article, though. It's a listing of all the lawsuits against Trump now about policies and actions that he's taken, which are unconstitutional, which are in violation of law. Um, and it goes on and on and on and on with citations. So if you're a lawyer or if you're interested in learning about all this litigation or just seeing the magnitude of it, go mm -hmm. on Wikipedia and look up, uh, you know, Trump lawsuits or Trump litigation. You'll find this right away. Uh, or Trump court cases. You'll find it right away. And it's, 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 it's updated like daily. Right. So this is what you want to look at, and we should look at it for one of our shows. Uh, if you want to know all the lawsuits that are, that are happening, uh, a lot of them have not been resolved, and there's a pipeline of them. And when they start getting resolved, we're going to see some interesting developments worth talking about here. I agree. I, you know, after I looked at those, when you sent those to me, I looked at that, and I decided I wanted to see, okay, so how many lawsuits did Obama have in his eight years? Okay. 35 all totaled um, from the GOP against his executive orders. Um, I didn't get a chance to look and really see how many of them 
were favorable for the GOP or favorable for Obama. I didn't get to see that part. But just as far as how many were brought against him, there's 35 all totaled in the eight years. Trump has 45, and he hasn't even been there for four years yet. So I think that really says a lot, just how unbalanced it is. Right? Got to look at the subject matter. I mean, I don't right. think that uh, I don't think that the suits against Obama were were founded in violations of the United States Constitution. No, I don't and think there's they were. There's a whole section on this website, a number of lawsuits, right. uh, based on Trump's alleged violation. Well, it's more than alleged. <laughs> violation yeah. of the of various provisions in, right. the, in the Constitution. Well, the, the, they separated out, too, in what you, that article you sent me, which is really great. They separated out between the sexual um, abuse ones that are against him, the ones that are against the emoluments, the ones that are against the campaign finance things there. So they're all separated out, too, so they're easy to really kind of yeah, get If you're your, following a given area right. of, of, of lawsuit, then easy to find the right. suit that you care about. Mm -hmm. But suffice to say, there are tons and tons. And, oh my gosh. and uh, they, they have been accumulating at a rapid rate. I would say the rate has been increasing, increasing. over the last uh, few months. Anyway, let's talk about our, our, uh, our observations of what Trump has been doing this week. There's plenty of it, and try to connect the dots. The first topic, um, and this is your agenda, Cynthia, and Cynthia Sinclair. Um, okay, Trump wants Putin back on the G7-8. What's going on? There are so many lies that he told around this whole subject, too. And now we're finally starting to hear from other world leaders so we really know what the truth is. Um, he was saying that everybody's behind him. They're all open to it. Actually, no, they're not open to it. They are absolutely adamantly opposed to having him come back. They excluded him because he invaded Crimea, right? So um, he's still there. <laughs> he's still occupying the place. It's not like he said, okay, I did wrong, I'll come back. I'm sorry, right? No, he's still there. Well, he's, still, he's, he's still in U Ukraine, too. Yeah, Ukraine, and he's still doing more. In Ukraine. And, and, and what's interesting, just a little footnote, is that Trump has stopped American aid to Ukraine. Yes, just recently. Trump, right, the last couple of days. And, you know, one of those uh, catch me if you can sort of things where he doesn't really right. announce it. Because yeah. he doesn't have press conferences. He has uh, helicopter struts, so to speak. So he can use the excuse. I didn't really hear the question correctly. He does. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's emerging that uh, right. Trump is Putin's best friend. Yes. And they got a relationship. Uh, oh, yeah. In, in, the, uh, in the Randy Rainbow, he calls him uh, uh, he calls Putin uh, Uncle Daddy or something. Uh, Trump's <laughs> right. daddy. Trump's daddy. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, you know, um, there were, they did take a vote. Six people, I mean, six of the leaders said no. Of course, Trump was all by himself out there. They created a rather large argument the very first night of the whole thing. Um, and then he says, well, Putin outsmarted Obama. Obama should have kept him from doing that. But he didn't, and Putin just outsmarted him. So we can't really hold it against Putin because all he did was, yeah, it was right. really Obama's fault. Everything's always Obama's that's fault. That's ridiculous. So there were um, some really big lies that he told about the summit when he was there. Um, the first one was there was no fights, when in reality there was bitter disagreements throughout the whole entire thing. Um, when he was um, being questioned about North Korea, and he's talking about what a great guy um, Kim Jong-un is and how what a great relationship they have with him. And, and even his wife, even Melania, is very fond of him. And all of this, like, they were best friends. When in reality, she's never even met him. And so the way they tried to cover that up was, well, I talk to her about him all the time, and that's why she likes him so much. Mm. She's, Crazy the way they try to cover up these lies. And Kim Jong-un, meanwhile, is firing missiles all over the Pacific. All over the Pacific and has now a submarine that is capable of firing nuclear weapons. It's not like a great relationship. Yeah, and, and he's done so well with all the things that he promised Trump. He hasn't done one single thing he promised Trump. But going back to the G7. So, okay, back to the G7. Um, he says that when he's being questioned about the whole China tariff, you know, trade war, um, he says that he just loves Xi Jinping, that they're just very good friends, that they called him and said they want to make a deal. Just not true at all. They didn't call him. 
to say they wanted to make a deal. It's really, in reality, they're fighting amongst themselves. Some of them want to sit down and try to make a deal, and the rest of them don't even want to sit down at all. So there's a big thing going yeah, on in between. Fact, the paper reported that, uh, that China, Xi Jinping, has not made any concessions whatsoever. None. Tariff, no tariff, doesn't matter. Doesn't care. They haven't conceded anything to Trump. And there is right. no incipient agreement. In fact, I'm not sure that Trump knows what the agreement you know, he wants is. He doesn't know what agreement. He's just right. beating people up. That's what he does. Well, he likes to say that China has been ripping us off for all these years, and it's all everybody else's fault. The two Bushes should have fixed it. You know, Clinton should have fixed it. Obama should. But he's the chosen one. He's going to be he the one know, to fix he it. He doesn't know what Jeez. to do. And he has no agenda on this phony agreement that he hopes. To, but they aren't responding at all. No. Um, so it was interesting. Well, let's, 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 let's interesting. make some traction here. One more here. big lie, I think, yeah. and one more big thing that I think was really important and telling, too. Yeah. Um, and that is that he did not go to the meeting that was about climate change. Well, that's when he had to rearrange his sock drawer. <laughs> yes, that's what he was doing. Well, he told everybody what he was doing was meeting with Germany and I think it was Israel. Um, and uh, they, they are pictured in the meeting, in the climate change meeting. So obviously he wasn't meeting with them, right? No, that's not true. So it's just a lie, another lie. There were a bunch of big lies that, that he told. Um, okay, let's move on. Yeah, let's move Oh, wait, no, wait, because I want to say the Dural thing really quick. He is inviting everyone for the G7, the G7, next G7 is going to be here in America. And he wants to have it at one of his clubs. A big one that he has down in, in Doral, Florida, the Doral Club. And um, so this, you know, puts him in a position to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, more like probably millions, because they're all going to bring their, you know, their entourage. They're going to bring everybody with them. Everybody's got to rent a place. And the rents will be high. And the rents will be jacked up. You know they will, provided that the club is still there. Because there's a tornado and a Dorian hurricane. Is, Dorian <laughs> is headed for mar -a -Lago. Headed right straight for mar -a -Lago. So yeah. who knows if any of his clubs will even be there. Okay, we take a short break. That's Cynthia Sinclair. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Trump Week. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. My name is Walter Kawai. I, uh, I'm your host for our monthly uh, live streaming video uh, entitled Ukulele Songs of Hawaii where I bring on guests. We enjoy talking story about the music industry here in Hawaii, uh, sometimes going back uh, 50 decades if possible, and uh, always having some good fun talking with entertainers. We're here located at Think Tech Hawaii, downtown Honolulu at the Pioneer Plaza building and uh, in their studios. And so join me next month for Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life, and the lives of people around you. Tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hey, Trump week. You know, if you had to define Obama, you, you, the word that comes to mind is decent. Yes. He wasn't right all the time, but he was always decent. Right. Um, you know, in the case of Trump, uh, you, if you look for a word to define him, it would be mean. Uh, right. And unethical. Crooked, you know. yeah. Crooked, thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, aside from this ethical consideration over using uh, Mar-a-Lago for government business, um, there, are, you know, there are other things, too. And one thing that popped up uh, this week was his attempt, and maybe he will succeed, at deporting sick children. Right. Children who will die without uh, American medical care. Want to talk about it? Well, I think one of the most dramatic examples of that is a little girl who was um, actually, they went out and invited her in because it's such a rare disease. For clinical trials. Right, for clinical trials in San Francisco, she was there. And um, she is now, they said she probably wouldn't live until she was even eight years old. She wouldn't even see eight. She's now like 24. 
she's already graduated from college with honors, right? Um, and is really active in helping other people with that same disease. And she got a letter. And this letter that Isabel, they're sending. Isabel, what's her name? Yeah, Isabel. She's as sweet as can be. Um, this is amazing attitude. And she lives in a wheelchair. I mean, she goes through incredible. Well, she has to have the pain, treatment the every, treatments every week. Every week. I think. Yeah, weekly treatments, infusions. Or she will die. Or she will die. Right. And the only thing that's keeping her alive. So he wants to send her away. She's got to go 33 days. Everybody that was sick that got one of these letters, it is a deportation letter that says you have to leave within 33 days or we're going to come find you. By the way, the government is not paying for her medical care. No. Her family has regular medical insurance right. that covers the cost of it. So this isn't one of those situations, you know, related to his attempt to deny green cards if you've taken government benefits. There are right. no government benefits involved here. Right. Uh, really awful what he's doing. He's essentially issuing a death warrant for this child. He is. No longer a child, a young, a young woman. Not just this child. There's a lot of them. There's apparently over a thousand of them. These letters that went out to different kids that are only here for medical treatments and that they have to leave their families. They and their families have to leave within 33 days. And one of the things that's important about this is that there's no um, advocate, there's no avenue for them to follow up to you know to try to go back and say wait no how do i fight this in court can i prove that i really am and really need this you know there's no there's no appeals process there's nothing for which, them. which means i mean the, the fair chance here is no matter what kind of outrage we have or that the country has or right thinking people decent people have uh these these kids Will probably have to leave and they will probably die like, yeah. like the one in question uh, uh isabel uh, yeah isabel um so if you're looking for decency you won't find it there in fact it gets worse all the time it gets heartless reminds me of the apprentice with the heartless senseless ass backwards firings of people all the time right that's what we got in this administration i don't yes. know who could relate to that I don't uh, either. That cruelty, that let's level talk about of cruelty. Environment. We got, we got, we're in the middle of climate oh, change. Oh boy. You spoke of how we had to clean his sock drawer while they, G7, were talking about environment. Right. Uh, but it gets much worse than that. Boy, does it what ever. What comes to mind is the story of the Tongass Forest. I've been there. I have it's too. It's breathtakingly it beautiful. I agree. And it is a big part of the North American contribution to retaining the carbon uh, and avoiding or minimizing, ameliorating right. climate change. But he's going to tear that up, just oh, like yeah. logging Bolsonaro in, yep. in Brazil. That's right. He says nothing about the fires in Amazon, in the Amazon, and he's refused to give any money to help to fight them, even though all the other countries came forward with money to help. And what he's doing in the Tongass is he's just letting oil and gas come up there and, you know, mine for whatever they want, wherever they want. Same with the loggers, the logging. They have carte blanche. Go do whatever you want. And, you know, I was watching a piece on that. They were interviewing some of the fishermen and some of the, the people who live up there. And they, mm. that's where they get their livelihood is from all of the animals and wildlife that live there. And not to mention just the ecosystem, the complete ecosystem that is there that will be destroyed. Destroyed. Yeah, they're going to destroy it. And, you know, one question this raises for me, uh, we should discuss at least briefly, is can he do this legally? Uh, maybe it's going to be one of those suits in the Wikipedia list. Uh, how can he wake up one morning and decide he's going to wreck a national forest? You know, the United States went through a lot of trouble to create the National Park National Forest System. Right. And this guy wakes up one morning and got a bad hair day. Actually, most days are bad, bad hair, hair day. days. And, and, uh, and he wants to destroy the right. Tongass Forest in Alaska. The biggest asset in Alaska is its environment, man. You know, and he's going to do that. Because he wants to, because he can. Can he? Doesn't it require some act of some agency? Doesn't it require the act of Congress? Doesn't it require somebody to make a, a, you know, a determination, maybe an environmental impact statement? Um, you know, I'm not sure uh, that he can do this. And, and uh, we have to find people who can resist this, either on a regulatory basis or in court. So to stop him from destroying our environment this way. Well, it won't be the EPA that stops him, which is <laughs> no, that's <true>. the regulatory <laughs> office that should stop him. But you know he's not, that's not going to happen, which is the reason why he can get away with doing all this. Yeah. And I think we just need a groundswell of people 
you know, we, we need one of those grassroots movements to just rise up in the public to stop him from doing this. Yeah. Because it's just crazy. And it won't be the Department of Agriculture because they're no. in the same place. I mean, right? he, he has these yes men, these secretaries who are yes men, and, and, and they just go along with whatever Trump wants. The Department of uh, Agriculture, the uh, Secretary of Agriculture, uh, Purdue, I think, I think so. Um, was out in, you know, in farmland in maybe Indiana somewhere in the Midwest. Um, and he gave a speech and he called the farmers who complained about the tariffs, he called them whiners. Ah. They're whining. They should tough it up. These are people that have lost their livelihoods. Up. Right. Ah. There's going to be a lot of bankruptcies. There are already, there are already a lot of bankruptcies. Some, yeah. the, farm, the farm belt can't tolerate this. The farmers are beginning to understand uh, that, uh, you know, the, these promises of, uh, Whatever, I don't know what promises were made about this, because you can't much, make much of a promise about the tariffs, um, you know, are, uh, are not coming true, and that Trump is killing them. Uh, and I think where they might have been sticking with him six months ago, that's over. I, I think you're right. It is over. And, you know, he says, well, I look at all this money I've given them. I've given them $11 billion Handout. or something like this. These handouts, well... Eat, and so only the big corporations, really, that are getting the money, and the little guys are not. That's true. There was and, a piece about that. Yeah, and they, so that's a big deal. They're actually not getting the money he promised. Yeah, the little guys are not. And yeah. so they're losing their, their farms. They're losing all of this year's crop, anyway. And then they have no market. So even if he drops all these tariffs, it took some of these guys 20 and plus years to get these markets together in China. Right? So. Um, they're not going to be able to just bing, put them back up again. They're going to have to find new markets. That's, that takes time. And only the big guys are going to survive. The little guys, forget it, they're gone. But yeah. you know, the, the EPA, speaking of the EPA a minute ago, they have just done a big, giant rollback on regulating methane emissions. Yeah. Which is the number one cause of killing it's worse, greenhouse it's worse than effect. Carbon dioxide. It is the biggest creator of the greenhouse effect? All and greed. It, it's all, all about greed. And all the Shell and Mobile, uh, Exxon, all these guys, they don't want any part of it. That's how stupid this whole thing is. Is they're like, no, no, no. No, no, we don't want to get involved in that. Thank you, but no thank you. Yeah. They, um, have, they have other ways to make their money like LNG, right. which they're all involved in. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, so, so this is really interesting. Um, at the same time, no action in Congress on the environment. It's all being rolled yeah. back at the Trump level. No action. And his uh, departments, uh, his secretaries are all in his pocket. Right. So what we have is a, a degradation of any environmental policy in the country. Oh, yeah. It's uh, absolutely. Even the auto, manuf auto manufacturers are against him right. on, on the emissions standards. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing is uh, we should talk about this, you know. So let me ask you a rhetorical question. Seen any action on gun control? Huh? Uh, yeah, right. He walked that right back, you know. Um, what did, what did, what's his name? Lesseur? No. Pierre, so, 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 the guy with the NRA. Yeah, the NRA. LaPierre, guy. LaPierre that's it. LaPierre, yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, he called Trump shortly after Trump had said, yeah, we need background checks. We need, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he talked to LaPierre, and now crickets. We hear nothing. Well, he walked it back. Oh, yeah, he walked it so, back and said, well, we already have a lot of, you know, those in place already. Yeah. So it's only really, Cynthia, it's only a matter of time. Uh, yeah. If we have another spate of these attacks, you know, this uh, domestic terrorism, the people use the same weapons they've been using because there's been no control on those weapons right. and shoot up a lot of people. And they're in this kind of competitive mode. Let me see if I can shoot more people than the last guy shot. Right. Let me just destroy everybody in sight. That's right. what's going to happen. It's just yeah. a matter of days or weeks. And some guy, some yunkle is going to do that again. Well, you know my thoughts behind that. Because I've been saying it all along. Um, I think he's trying to make these people do this. I think he's po poking the bear, poking these people to try to rile them up so that he can have a full-blown riot on his hands so he can declare martial law. I really believe that's what... Because that, if he's always going towards power... Right? And everything he does is taking power away from the people and putting it back in his, squarely in his corner. And so the more powerful he gets, the more power he wants. And there's nothing more powerful than martial law. 
Oh, yeah. Well, you can stop an election. Everything. You stop anything. Everything. You, you stop are 2020 all election. And everybody answers to you. Well, it's going that way, isn't it? It is going that way, and I've seen it going that way from the very beginning. I'm not so sure I agree with you, though, um, on the point of uh, he's got the methodology here. I think he's very, you know, narcissistic and tropistic. Yes. When I say tropistic, that sounds like Trumpistic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple mechanism. He has to have the ego stroked all right. day. All, yep. And it's very short-term thinking. Right. And, uh, you know, what happens is he's got, he's got a list of... Uh, of points, many of which are lies, most of which are lies, and he keeps rolling them out. Over 10,000 <clears> lies now. I thought it was 15, but who's and counting? It's, well, it's actually, I have a thing, I found some out. Um, in the last, okay, he's said 9,014 lies or misleading statements in the last 773 days. CNN says it's 10,000. The New Yorker says, and this is the important one, I think, 2,140 lies in the last six months, okay? And that was um, 16, he averages 16 per day. But in June and July, just those two months alone, there were 4,229. So he's going up. Yes, it's yes. It's getting worse. He's upping his lies. And you know it's for a purpose. It's to well, desensitize our ability to recognize a lie. That's right, right, think. right. He's, he's, he's lulling us somehow. He's getting into a new normal where lies are the, are the normal. Know, and what, what happens if you have a lot of lies like that? And we're not including yet Kellyanne Conway oh, yeah. and his various <laughs> yes men secretaries and his most fabulous uh, attorney general who is oh, now please. chasing Comey around. Uh, I thought that finished and so, he got yeah, No, I, not. Oh, not. it's still I mean, not I mean, done. I mean, put him in jail. He puts his adversaries in jail or, or ruins their life in some way. Right. Just like The Apprentice. These, you know, these, these lies and these, these, his little jukebox of, of things that he trots out, like, oh, let's have another tax break. Can he afford the tax break? He's giving away hundreds of millions, maybe billions to the farmers, but he wants to do a tax break. What? Um, right. You know, we're, we're going into, you know, trillions and gazillions of, of uh, budget uh, deficit. Um, oh, yes. And he's going to give a tax break? I mean, the point, the point I make is that he's got this jukebox worth of ridiculous statements. So he's testing us. He, he has no brain trust that can stop him, that can feed back or push back on, right. on his, uh, you know, crazy three o'clock in the morning hamburger ideas. <laughs> and so, you know, what is that? Is that, is that a methodology? Is that something you plan? You know, it's very instrumental uh, when some reporter asked him in connection with his quote, negotiations uh, with China. So, you know, you've been, uh, you've been beating them up. At the same time, you know, you've been saying you've got a great relationship. Um, what kind of negotiation is that? And right. Trump said, you don't understand. That's my style. Oh, right. My style is to keep them off balance. And mm -hmm. so they never know what's going to happen. That's my negotiating style. At that point, the reporter said, well, actually, what is your point in this negotiation? That's when Trump, Trump changed the subject, as I recall. Right. So bottom line is uh, there may not be a methodology here. There may not be a specific target he's looking for. You know, we used to talk about him being a dictator like Hitler or others. Um, he may wind up that way, but he's, I don't think he has a plan. He doesn't oh. have a plan to deal with China or North Korea. He doesn't really have a plan to deal with Iran or Brazil or climate change. He doesn't have plans. He doesn't have policies. It's what he wakes up in the morning with. This is the scariest thing of all. Why? Because you can make a big mistake that way, right. a series of mistakes, and get the world in a pickle. Kind of like he has already, you mean? Kind of <laughs> like he has already. Right. Well, but I think there is a little bit of a plan. I think he does have a bit of an idea. I think his goal, he may not know exactly what route he's going to take to get there, but I know his goal is all power because that's what narcissists do. That's their only thing they care about is being in control and having power. Well, and yeah, and, and there's a plan, too, to confuse people and distract them. Exactly. And, and make the truth elusive. Right. Uh, this is very troublesome. And, and what happened uh, yesterday was very troublesome with, uh, with Biden because Biden was right. caught on making various uh, right. renditions Take, right. of his story about the war in Afghanistan and his right. involvement in pinning a medal or not on some soldier. 
uh, which, which really sounded creepy to me, because he was talking about, in one rendition, talking about a Navy captain who was out there in the field. Uh, they don't have Navy captains out there in the field. That's a very senior rank. I don't think he understood. Right. Bottom, bottom line is that Biden's credibility is seriously jeopardized right yes, now. Yes, it is. And the average, the average citizen can say, ah, all of these guys, you know, Everybody they're all lies. telling us stories. Yeah. What are we to believe? Trump started it, you know, mm -hmm. but there's, there's evidence that others are doing it too. And this is a big right. problem in terms of finding a leader mm -hmm. who will take us out of Trump's swamp. Uh, and I fear that it may not be Biden. He, I, may, not, he may be over the, over the top on this. I don't um, think it is. And maybe it's Elizabeth Warren, actually. I hope it's Elizabeth Warren. I think she's tough enough to fight him and he won't push her around. I think Biden is too nice. To be honest, I think he has too much class to lower himself to Trump's level and fight back that way. I think if Trump hits him with stuff, he's going to just crumble because yeah. he's too decent. Well, he doesn't have he's it together. Too, he's but... too decent. And he's, yeah, he's a little scattered. And I, I was surprised to find him this scattered in his um, different speeches. But, you know, the, the thing I like about Warren is that she is just right to the point, and she's got a plan. She's not scattered. She's not telling lies, you know, and the whole Indian thing. Heck, everybody in America has a little bit of Indian in them. Okay. So, you know, I don't think she should have that held against her. We're out of here, Cynthia. We're done. But Thank there's like 20 much, more Cynthia. things to talk well, about. Save now. them till next week. Aloha. <laughs> okay. Aloha, everyone.